Hello, I'm reading Evie, and today I finished um, What She Knew by Gilly, Mac Gilly Macmillan? Gilly? I don't know. It's G I L L Y. I finished it on my tablet, so I don't have the physical copy. Um, and it is about. Go away. Uh, Rachel Jenner is uh, walking in a Bristol park with her eight-year-old son, Ben. When he asks if he can run ahead, it's an ordinary request on an ordinary Sunday uh, afternoon, and Rachel has no reason to worry until Ben vanishes. Police are called, search parties go out, and Rachel, already insecure about her recent divorce, feels herself coming undone. As hours and then days pass with, uh, without a sign of Ben, Everyone who knew him is called into question, from Rachel's newly married ex-husband to her mother of the year's sister. Inevitably, media attention focuses on Rachel, too. And the public's attitude towards her begins to shift from sympathy to suspicion. As she desperately pieces together the threadbare clues, Rachel realizes that the greatest danger dangers may not lie uh, or may lie not in the anonymous strangers of every every parent's nightmares but behind the familiar smiles of those she trusts the most. Where is Ben? The clock is ticking. And then, in my notes, I was reading on uh, Goodreads. Um, I have 26 notes on this, thoughts on this. It's quite a few. Um, this book starts off with the prologue being a year after Ben's disappearance, oddly enough. Although I'm finding it funny that the last book I read had a bin for the child, and so does this one. Um, it was the lucky one, for those of you who didn't see my last video. Uh, but the mother was thinking about how everyone asked her if she had any intuition that her son was taken, and of course she said no. And for some reason, that gets her hated on. She's not a psychic, though. She's human. And I guess people forget that about mothers. Uh, so it goes on to the day of, um, him being kidnapped. Uh, I said, I hope he lives. I wonder who took him. And I said, I kind of doubt he will live because we keep getting in the head of a detective on the case and he's been having insomnia and panic attacks after the case, which we find out why later on. Was it about Ben? Who knows? Jim said that he was single when uh, he was talking to the psychiatrist, psychiatrist he was ordered to see. But when I'm reading day two, um, he clearly has a girlfriend, and I wonder if what had happened caused it to fail or what. And then I said, okay, maybe it has, because they do work together, as we find out. <sighs> I was a little worried about how Jim was because he was talking about how feelings are a weakness. And I was like, oh, no, is he going to be an asshole uh, or sexist or whatever? But so far, he doesn't seem like it at all. Rachel didn't follow the script at the press conference. And while she basically did uh, what any mother would feel like doing, um, she told them that she would hunt down, hunt them, hunt them down whoever took her kid. Somehow it made her seem bad. Uh, mostly because she also had like the scratch on her forehead from running in the woods the day before uh, to try to find Ben. And she'd accidentally opened it uh, while she was sitting there. And so she was bleeding. And after her speech, she felt proud of herself and was smiling. So people were concerned that she had something to do with it. Um, and she explains why she went off script. And it was just because... She realized the person who had her son was just standing there, or probably watching, and then seeing them crying and just basically, in her eyes, looked pathetic. Um, so, which I didn't blame her. But apparently, a lot of people do in the book. And I said, Oh, she was talking about how life should stop until he comes back. And um, because she was like it was an insult to what he might be going through um, because like her body still demanded the normal things you know like eating and stuff um, and she just felt like that shouldn't be happening which I don't blame her someone spray painted bad mother on her fence and I said how heartless 
they keep talking about Rachel's outbursts at the press conference and how she may have uh, the capability for uncontrolled outbursts of anger and a potential impulse for, re for revenge. I mean, her child is missing. Of course she's angry. Who wouldn't be angry? Um, and who wouldn't want revenge? Now, so Rachel found out her parents didn't die in a car wreck, and her aunt and sister changed the names of the entire family, including um, her. Her parents' names were really Andrew and Naomi Bowness, and they had a brother named Charlie. Um, Rachel and Nikki isn't even their real names either. Um, Alice and Katie is. Um, Alice is Nikki's real name, and Katie is Rachel's. Apparently, her parents killed Charlie and themselves because Charlie was termini terminally ill and with no support system. And then Nikki um, is starting to get mad at Rachel for whatever reason and was like, you're ungrateful, difficult, irresponsible, and clueless. Yeah, if you lie to someone all their lives, they'll be clueless. And she's talking about like how she was ungrateful or whatever. And I mean, she had no reason to know that she should be grateful or anything like that. Nikki was kind of annoying. Emma was telling Rachel, um, Emma the, uh, did I mention her Emma yet? Well, she was Jim's girlfriend. Um, yeah, Jim. Uh, she was their was it, family liaison, liaison officer. Uh, she was telling Rachel she didn't want kids because Rachel had asked if she wanted them. And Rachel was like, you know that already? And like, I'm not saying she was trying to be rude, but nobody asked that when someone says they do want kids. And I said, the double standards is annoying. And then I said, oh no, the cops received a letter from someone that said, John Finch will now understand how it feels to lose a child. It serves him right. He has been arrogant and now will be humbled by medicine. Life may be prolonged, yet death will seize the doctor too. So I'm obviously guessing a patient of his has died and the parents or parent is taking it out on his son, which is quite sick sickening. And then we found out that the late, the letter, later, letter wasn't even from the kidnapper. It was from a man who did lose his kid, but we knew he couldn't have done anything because he has a hospital bed in his own home um, and he's dying. But the fact that he wrote the letter just still disgusted me whether he could have done it or not because who wishes harm on a kid for that I guess it's one of those you'd be surprised things uh, <clears throat> Rachel thinks it's someone at his school and honestly so do I because she's going through like his schoolwork from the first semester and he had drawn their walks in the woods and they do it every Sunday so it makes sense that it's someone who knows their routine um, the cops had suspected the teacher's assistant, but I'm kind of sussing the teacher. And I said, uh, uh, Emma is the leak to the blog. So why the fuck would she do that? I wonder if this is why they break up. And it was. I wrote later that it was. Um, because there was like a blog that was like, where is, uh, Benedict Finch, uh, and they just keep writing, like, about the case and stuff and basically implying that the mother did it. And the comments are always bad on there. Also thinking that Rachel did it. Uh, someone threw a brick that said, bad mother, through Rachel's window. Uh, John had chased the person because he had been over at her house and he had ended up being attacked and is now barely alive at the hospital. He ends up making it through, though, um, like after or near the end of the book. Now, I said Katrina is pregnant, but John doesn't know. Katrina is John's new wife. Um, and then at the end of the book, they it's a little girl named Chloe. Um, apparently, Nikki hasn't been living at home like she said she was. She was at the cottage that belonged to the family. Uh, her family. Uh, Rachel and Ben were actually supposed to go there and be with Nikki and the girls for vacation in the beginning of the book. 
but yet the girls are living at home too. She left her husband and kids. She left uh, Rachel supposedly take care of her girls, but I'm starting to guess that she has been there. Uh, Rachel got on Ben's favorite game, uh, some football thing online for kids, um, and thinks he was playing because she couldn't get into one of the accounts. And I said, I wonder if he was. He was. It was him. Uh, we find out later on. And I said, apparently Emma lost her sister when she was six, and the baby was two, the sister. Her dad told her to watch the two-year-old while he went and mowed, and she went to the bathroom, and when she came back, the sister was gone. And she found her um, at the side, or in the side of the bed, where the two-year-old got stuck and then suffocated. Um, the dad had blamed Emma for it. So sadly, Emma had a girl with that, but knew as an adult that obviously she wasn't at fault. Which she wasn't. <laughs> she was a child, and... Didn't know you could die from that kind of stuff. She held that grudge and put it on Rachel, though, and felt she should have been punished for letting Ben out of her sight. Um, she feels remorseful, though, for her mistake and knew she was wrong, at least. Which, I mean, honestly, if you grew up with a dad who blamed you, a six-year-old, for your sister's death, it kind of made sense. Um, the teacher said something about Ben's money, which is his blanket, I guess. This book is also taking place in London because apparently I can't escape London uh, except for when I read Nicholas Sparks. Um, the book I'm reading now is set in the States. <laughs> but um, she said, Rachel said that it was his blanket. So like a child's blanket kind of thing. Like I think a baby's blanket. Uh, ben wouldn't have spoken of that because he was embarrassed of it, which is why I thought it was a baby's blanket. Um, but somehow she knew. She tried telling one, uh, Rachel tried telling one of the cops that, but of course they just think that he told her. Because she did help them out when the divorce happened. Like I said earlier, I'm definitely sussing the teacher. Um, and yeah, the teacher had a room that was hidden, and in it was a little boy's room with clothes that said age 8 tonic. Uh, luckily the mom was able to call 999. So weird to say, other than 911. Uh, I'm hoping they find him and she's not in trouble for stealing the keys and going in the teacher's flat. But as far as I know, she wasn't. Um, because that kind of did prove that it was her who um, kidnapped him. Um, someone had found Ben in just his underwear uh, in the woods and he's freezing cold, unconscious, and barely breathing. I'm worried he's not going to make it. And then I wrote later that. Apparently, he had severe hypothermia because he was left out all night with no clothes. They did manage to warm him up, though, and he's stable, but in dangerous condition. Uh, but he did live, so. Ben was telling Rachel what happened and how, like, what he kept talking about the most was um, when he, like, <clears throat> well, he didn't really explain what happened during that week. But he explained how he, uh, she, uh, the teacher, walked up and, uh, I guess, took his hand and then led him to the car. Um, but what Joanna, the teacher, didn't uh, expect was for Skittles, his dog, to follow him. Um, and so she kicked him. And that is what Ben focused on the most was her treatment to the dog. Uh, but that was also when Ben realized that something was wrong. That was all my notes. Um, it was an okay book. Uh, it was kind of boring. It took me most of the week to, to finish it. And I wasn't busy this week either. I had, like, some clients, so... But... Um, it was an okay book. I stuck with it mostly because I wanted to know what happened to Ben. Um, and, I mean, it was good. It wasn't the best, but I liked it. It was good. Uh, let me know if you read it and what you thought. Um, subscribe, like, and share. And follow us on TikTok. Same names, Reading Evie Etsy's Live. And follow his channel.